These are probably two of the most iconic medium format film cameras. We've got here a Rolleiflex and a Hasselblad. Now I've shot hundreds if not thousands of rolls with both of these cameras and I've taken them from the deserts of Arizona all the way up to the mountains of Norway so I got a pretty good first-hand experience of both of these. I think I can also be pretty unbiased. I truly love them both and they are my go-to cameras in many occasions. For this comparison I've chosen the best of breed in my opinion. Rolleiflex 2.8F considered by many, not just me, the best of the Rolleiflex line. And then the Hasselblad 500cm attached with a 100 millimeter planar lens that many people consider the best lens available for this camera. I know it's a little bit like comparing apples to oranges and for that reason let's use five different categories so that we can really get into the details of these two systems. Uh, let's talk about uh, versatility, build quality, usability, cost and then image quality. Uh, let's start with the versatility. That also allows us to talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, how different these two cameras are. With Rolleiflex, what you see is what you get. You cannot change the lens. You are stuck with a beautiful and marvelous planar f2.8 80mm lens. 80mm, 75-80mm in a medium format camera equals to 50mm in a regular 35 millimeter camera. Now even though you cannot change the lens, you can of course have filters and then uh, Rolleiflex has a close-up lens system called Rolleinar that allows you to attach close-up lenses. So this adds a little bit versatility. It's of course it's not the same as changing the lens but nevertheless uh, here's one picture that I took with this combination. Now with this Rolleiflex you can change the focusing screen to a prism and you can change the focusing glass and then there is a gadget called a Rolleikin that you can attach to your camera and it allows you to use 35mm film with your Rolleiflex. Now then, if we take a look at the Hasselblad and talk about the versatility, this is a totally different ball game. Hasselblad's middle name is versatility and this is an entire camera system, not just a single camera. Uh, you can of course change lenses. The party trick of a Hasselblad is that you can change the film in the middle of the roll. Say I have here a black and white film and I've taken a few pictures and then I want to change to a color film. It is as simple as changing the back and now you can shoot with the color film. In addition to changing the film, changing the lenses, you can of course change the viewfinder to the prism one, you can change the focusing glass, you can change the uh, film advance crank to different types and so on and so forth. Now for these different categories let's try to give them some points from uh, say from 10 to 1, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. With the versatility I must give Hasselblad an 8. Now why don't I give it a 10? The reason for that is that even though you can change the lenses, the only ones that are available are built by Carl Chais for Hasselblad system. So there are no third-party lenses, no cheap options, no weird options. And the number of different lenses is fairly limited. Now that is of course compensated by the excellent quality of these lenses, but it limits a little bit the versatility. Now Rolleiflex then. Uh, this is a monolithic, more simple construction. What comes to versatility, I think we gotta stick with, uh, let's give it 2. 8, 2. Now it's of course up to you how much you value the possibility to change the lens. But as we will see further on, there is also some disadvantages uh, being so versatile as Hasselblad is. 8, 2. Moving on. Let's then talk about the build quality. 
I think these are both marvelously built. If you just take them into your hand, you can feel how solid they feel. Coming out of the factory, I bet they are both absolutely perfect. But now they are both 50 years old. So little by little, you start to notice some differences. Now let's start with a Hustle blood. Uh, this is like an old Volvo. It is safe, it is heavy, it feels solid. But with these moving parts and with the versatility comes a problem. For example, each and every lens has its own shutter. So you get as many shutters to look after as you get lenses. These film bags are a little bit prone to light leaks. So you need to change light seals every now and then. There's a mirror inside of it and a lot of moving parts. Those can go wrong. And then, of course, uh, because how it's designed, uh, you can actually jam the entire system in the uh, photo situation. That is more a usability thing. But as these things get older, uh, that will most probably give you more headache. So then, what about the Rolleiflex? This is your measure stick for build quality. It is built like a tank. It is so beautifully crafted. And once again, let's remind us that I'm talking about my experience. I've owned several of these and they have all been absolutely perfect. I've never had a failure in a shooting situation. So what comes to the build quality, based on my real life experience, I gotta give a Rolleiflex a 10 and I'll give a Hasselblad an 8. Moving on, let's talk about the usability. Now to me, usability is one of the most important aspects of a camera. Uh, let's start with the Rolleiflex. From the usability point of view, this is my absolute favorite. It is ideal for almost every situation. It's a perfect treat photo camera. It is excellent in a portrait situation. It is very easy to take it with you on a hike and take some uh, landscape pictures with it. And since Rolleiflex comes with a protective leather case, uh, you, can, you can actually take it wherever you go and it is fully protected with this cover. This is fast to use, it fits into every occasion, it never fails. So from the usability point of view, I gotta give this camera a pure 10. As we already agreed, Hasselblad is unique in its versatility. But then that comes with a price and that price is mostly paid in the usability. You need to be careful when operating the modularity because you can jam the entire system if you do it in the wrong way. It's bulkier, it's heavier, it's more complex to use. You need to be more intentional with your hustle blood. As an example, if I would need to choose a street photo camera, I would take a Rolleiflex in a heartbeat just because of its usability. If I'm having a good time with my friends or with my family and want to shoot some pictures in that situation, once again, I would take a Rolleiflex because of its usability. Now, in some occasions, usability is not that important. If you put your camera on the tripod in a studio or if you are taking landscape, the usability may not be that important. But in this category, the pure usability, I can only give a Hasselblad a five. So it's a 10 to five. So let's take an example. Here's a picture that I took a few weeks ago. This is my father. He is 90. And in order to take these kind of pictures, you need to be fast and you gotta be in a moment. So for these kind of uh, impulsive and organic pictures, I would totally prefer a Rolleiflex or Hasselblad just because of its usability. So and once again, this is based on my experience and I got a pretty strong opinion about this. And then cost. Oh boy, oh boy. These are both really expensive, too expensive. The prices of analog cameras have skyrocketed lately. And, and these two cameras are among those that are too far already. Then on the other hand, they don't make these anymore. So who knows? At least, unlike with the digital gear, with film cameras, your investment is secure. That's what I keep on telling myself. 
these are so expensive that I would never ever buy these online from an unknown source. Instead, I would strongly suggest that you would go to a trusted source. My trusted source is a camera store. It's a Finnish online store that sells a humongous amount of film cameras and film gear. And they have an excellent team of technicians that go through each and every camera, fix them if that's needed, change the light seals and make sure that you get a perfect camera. Now online, looking at some of the Hasselblad systems, these seem to vary from 1700 euros all the way to almost 2500. Uh, with this lens or an 80 millimeter, so prepare to pay 2000 for a full Hasselblad system. Then with the Rolleiflex, there are many models of these, but this top of the line 2.8, there's one currently for sale on camerastore.com, 1400 euros. But I've seen them gone all the way up to 2000. So, um, but I think it's fair to say that a Rolleiflex is still a little bit cheaper than a Hasselblad, but with these prices, it's tough. Um, I'll give a Hasselblad 1 and I'll give a Rolleiflex 3. The prices of these cameras are still going up, so maybe this is not the worst possible investment. No, that's a wrong way to think about it. You don't buy a camera to sell it, you buy a camera to shoot. If you use them a lot, that could be a money well spent. So here we go. We are comparing apples to oranges. We are comparing a Rolleiflex top of the line camera to a Hasselblad top of the line camera system. We now gone through versatility, build quality, usability, cost, and now the last but not the least image quality. Image quality of a Hasselblad of course depends on the lens that you use. But I will not go through that right now. Uh, let's concentrate on the planner because that's the comparison here. But what I'm gonna say is actually applies to almost all of these lenses. They are all built by Carl Chais and they are all excellent lenses. Then also with the image quality, I think a real life experience is what matters. With both of these cameras, you can get so good pictures that in most cases, the image quality is not an issue at all. 95% of the cases, there is no real difference between the image quality. But there's one particular case where Hasselblad really beats the competition. This may be important to you or not. For me, it is important. And as I said, this, this comparison is really based on my own experience and my shooting habits. So that's why I want to take this up. I shoot a lot of landscape, seascape, uh, lake views. I want to capture the summer light. I want to capture the brightness, the rays of sun. You can safely point your hustle blood towards the sunlight, towards the most brightest things and still get excellent results. There's no haze, there's no distortion. Even more, if you point your hustle blood directly at the sun, you get these beautiful aperture rings to your picture and you learn to control them. It is fairly easy to get them aligned the way you want. If you don't want to get them, you can also do that very easily with a Hasselblad. In all summer light conditions, shooting directly at the sun in the most bright sunlight, nothing works as well as a Hasselblad. And that goes with any of these lenses. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at the crispness, the cleanness of these summer pictures. Take a look at the nice artifacts that I wanted to get on those pictures and I artificially invited into my images. This is the only situation where I find shooting with the Rolleiflex a little bit more challenging. Let's take a look at a few examples where I know that my Hasselblad would have succeeded perfectly, but where my Rolleiflex fails.
As you can see, there was a lot of haze in the pictures. And because of the two lens architecture, you can't always be exactly sure how the artifacts get on the picture because it's a different image that you get to the viewfinder. Typical artifact for a Hasselblad are these aperture plates that I like a lot. A Rolliflex puts an hourglass in an opposite corner of the light source. Now, if we compare these two cameras in terms of the image quality, there's not really that much difference. Other than in this particular situation, where you shoot directly at the sun, you try to control the haze, and you want to control the possible artifacts getting on your picture. Hasselblad is superior to any other camera that I know. So I would then rate the image quality with the Rolliflex perfect, and a Hasselblad absolutely perfect. I shoot mostly black and white, so whether the lens is coated or not has not so much meaning to me, so I unfortunately can't really talk about that. But with the Hasselblad system, of course, an added benefit is that based on your preference, you can choose a lens that is coated in a way that suits your needs. The later lenses are compatible with your old Hasselblad bodies, but the coating is different and may be better for your color photography. So rating the image quality, I gotta give a full 10 to Hasselblad. And because of this little challenge, that to you may mean nothing, but for me during the summer months irritates me, I give a Rolleiflex only 8. That is bold. So now, let's add up the points. Once again, I just want to remind you that I've shot hundreds and hundreds of rolls with both of these cameras. I do this comparison based on my own shooting preferences and my own experiences, and this is by no means scientific. If we put now the numbers into a spreadsheet, we can see that with the slightest possible margin, for me, the winner is a Rolliflex. And for you, which one you like, it kind of depends on your shooting habits. Do you prefer the versatility and the modularity over the usability? And is my experience uh, shooting during the bright summer months important to you? This little difference in points also reflects my personal experience. I think I use my Rolliflex a bit more than I use my Hasselblad. But I love them both dearly.